From the United Kingdom in the House of Lords in 1932 comes perhaps the most famous case in law, Donoghue and Stevenson. On Sunday the 26th of August 1928, May Donoghue met an unidentified friend of hers at the Well Meadow Cafe in Paisley. Miss Donoghue's friend ordered herself a pear and ice and a Scotsman ice cream float, which is a mixture of ice cream and ginger beer for Miss Donoghue. The two ladies enjoyed their desserts, however, when Miss Donoghue's friend poured the last of the ginger beer onto Miss Donoghue's ice cream, the decomposing remains of a snail fell out of the bottle. Miss Donoghue was sickened by this image, knowing she had consumed the liquid this snail had been floating in and began to feel pain in her abdomen. She consulted a doctor three days later on the 29th and was admitted to Glasgow Royal Infirmary for emergency treatment on the 16th of September. There she was diagnosed with gastroenteritis and shock. Miss Donoghue sought the services of Mr. Walter Leachman, a local solicitor who had acted in a similar case some weeks earlier in the case of Mullen and A.G. Barr and Company Limited. A writ was filed by Mr. Leachman on the 9th of April 1929, claiming the sum of £500 in damages, which would be £28,900 in today's 2017 money, and £50 in costs, which would be £2,890 today. As the common law stood at the time, a person only owed another person a duty of care when that person was harmed by the negligence of another person. That is, it was quite limited to more or less direct or indirect actions. As there was no contract between Miss Donoghue and the manufacturer of the ginger beer, he did not owe her a duty of care. However, the court held that a manufacturer does indeed owe a duty of care to the end customer as the purpose of their product is to be consumed. Therefore, the absence of a contract between two parties does not mean that one does not owe a duty of care to another. Lord Atkin famously enunciated this neighbour principle, that one must take reasonable care to avoid acts or omissions that could reasonably be foreseen as likely to injure one's neighbour. Miss Donoghue was successful in her claim, although the case settled outside of court in 1934 for £200, which would be £13,141 of today. Mr. Stevenson had a duty of care to ensure that snails did not get into his bottles. Of course, there is something to note in all of this. Surely one could inspect a glass bottle to check for snails and anything else out of the ordinary, this is true. However, the bottles Mr. Stevenson used were opaque and thus could not be inspected by a prospective consumer, meaning that the manufacturer had the duty to make sure they were not selling decomposing snails to old ladies. However, that is where the silliness and the humour ends, as nobody lived happily ever after. Mr. Stevenson died in 1932, leaving his estate to settle the case in 1934. His business was taken over by his family and became a limited company in 1950. The manufacturing plant was demolished in the 1960s, and the Will Meadow Cafe, where it all began, closed in 1931, with the building demolished in 1959. Miss Donoghue, perhaps from the stress and illness of the case, died of a heart attack on March 19, 1958, in Gartlock Mental Hospital. And such concluded the case of the snail in the ginger beer.